Hi everyone! My name is Isabel and I've been a Webtoon creator for about 10 months now. I wanted to pass along some tips I've learned along the way for anyone who's interested in making a Webtoon himself. Now before you upload, you should consider the following things. I'm assuming you already have a story or characters in mind, but have you figured out the route your story will take? I recommend having a general plot laid out, including your ending. It's okay not to have 100% of your story finalized, but make sure you've got some significant plot points figured out. Some relationships and plot points will form naturally as you go, and that's cool too. But having your general plot in mind, it will keep you on track. The reason I recommend you have your ending in the back of your mind is because we all want you to be able to finish the story successfully and be proud of it. Unfinished stories happen all the time for a variety of reasons, and while there's nothing wrong with moving on from projects you're no longer excited about, it's also a great personal achievement to finish your story. For this reason, choose a story you're excited about, and one you can see yourself creating long term, possibly for a year or more. If you're passionate about the characters and their stories, you'll continue to enjoy producing the comic. It would be a shame for you to put so much effort into a story that you weren't really that into. I recommend you upload the first three chapters at once. This is because by the third chapter, Webtoon asks the reader if they want to subscribe. This is a very strategic move. If you post three chapters at once, you're more likely to keep the readers who just happened upon you. I highly recommend this. If you have a busy schedule, I suggest having a buffer zone of chapters ready to go. It's really hard to post weekly if you're working solo and have a busy schedule on top of that. But if you're a few chapters ahead, then you can rest easy knowing you're staying on schedule. Lastly, choose a style you can easily and comfortably recreate. If you choose to make your style really complex, just keep in mind that it's going to take a lot longer to recreate this. I'm personally a strong believer in saving time and cutting corners. If you're struggling with time management and such, I suggest watching this video by Lars Martinson. He spent 13 years making one comic book and has some great suggestions that I completely stand by. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about change. As you post regularly, you may notice changes in your art style. This is 100% okay. Readers enjoy seeing creators improve and they'll cheer you on and be happy for your growth as an artist. If you desire, it's acceptable to go back and revamp or update early chapters to elevate the art style. And readers are cool with that too. But what if you want to change dialogue or plot points in previous chapters? This is tricky. Keep in mind that too much change might upset your readers. This is one of the biggest burdens of a webcomic. It's hard to go back and revise. If you were writing a novel and sending it to editors, you'd go through at least two drafts before revealing your story to the public. A webcomic for many creators is a single draft story. You can't go back and make major changes in the same way you could before people read it. Imagine if J.K. Rowling decided to make Neville Longbottom the chosen one instead of Harry after you'd already read the first three books. It would be very confusing as a reader, it might upset you, and there will be confusion as to what's really canon anymore. But many creators get this opportunity when they're moved over to the Originals tab, and they rewrite the beginning of their stories. This is partially due to the fact that they have Webtoon editors now suggesting changes, but the opportunity to make a new draft for some creators is really wonderful. I want to make this clear. Change is okay. Change can be wonderful and readers can love the changes. My advice is just to be strategic with it. Let's move on to time savers. If you're a full-time employee or student, then you know making a webtoon is going to take a lot of energy and time out of your already busy day. It's hard to post regularly if you have a booked schedule. Here are a few suggestions to save you time in different ways. Reuse art when you can. If you save backgrounds and textures, you can easily reuse them later. Maybe you don't have time to release your comic in full color yet, and that's okay. Or maybe you want to use only flat colors without shading. That's also okay. I'm sure you've noticed when a creator reuses a panel for another shot. 
Usually with a changed expression or changed lighting or something, this is totally acceptable. And you can get away with doing this quite a lot if you're careful about it. Some creators make their backgrounds in a computer simulation. I am no expert on how to do this. But if you can do this, I recommend it. Lastly, many creators hire artist assistants. This is, of course, costly for you because you'd pay them for their services. Some creators send the assistants sketches to ink or inking to color. This is really common in traditional comic publishing as well. There's usually a whole team of artists devoted to a single story. Webtoon is different because for most of us, especially on Canvas, it's a one-person show. I hope you found these tips and insights helpful. Of course, there's so much more that goes into Webtoons. Ad sharing, how does that work? How do you get on recommended lists? How do you get featured and what does that really mean? But if you're just starting out, stay positive about those small achievements. It takes a while to get noticed, but the journey is a blast. Good luck with your Webtoons and happy reading.